come to you this morning. I can't repeat all the names of these we've lifted up, and Lord, this is just the beginning. This, this, this is just a few that, that, that come to mind and that have crossed paths with us in the, in the last week or so. We have losses of loved ones on here. We, we, have, we have critical illnesses. We have some that are having problems and doctors don't seem to be able to figure it out. And Lord, we are a nation that, is, that has been plagued with an invisible enemy they call the coronavirus. We thank you this morning that we can come here and worship you. And as far as we know, we are all well and free from that. Help us to be smart, but at the same time, live our lives because you want us to have love, joy, and peace. And we thank you for that. I thank you for each one that's present here this morning. We lift up, we lift up Sister Ann Yon. God, just, just get, give her, give her some vitality and some, some strength back. Thank you for, thank you for rescuing Mary Norman and lifting her up. Oh God, I just, I just praise you this morning. I just praise your holy name. Thank you for all those who've chosen to come and worship you. Bless those others, Lord, that are part of our family, but for one reason or another, still choose not to. They're still, they're still the family. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Doreen, if you and, you and Brother Jeff want to come, come and join You can also uh, be turning in your Bibles uh -oh, during this time to uh, 23rd Psalm. We're going to pick back up there in a few moments. I hope mine's still in tune. We're going to finally, we're going to finally be able to hear you pick that thing. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I got a nap. He knew he, he knew I was fixing to sing, didn't he? Take a deep breath. Mm -hmm. Suck him in. Suck him suck him in. <laughs> that ain't exactly what I had in mind. Oh my goodness. He'll take care of him. For for those of you uh, out there across the, the across the country. Uh, maybe even Sister Emma over in uh, over in Africa. If you're joining us this morning, uh, as always, we're delighted to have you. And uh, we're going to do a beautiful song here. And I'm going to especially dedicate this song to uh, to my mother in Christ this morning. I know how you love this song. I know how you look forward to uh, uh, going going to this place called Beulah Land. I'm kind of
I'm standing looking across that river where all my faith is gonna end in the sand. There's just a Come through about like you hoped it would, Brother Dennis. Okay, all right. Pretty good, usually. All right. <laughs> and y'all found that if something's pretty good, you can you can live with that. Amen. Amen. Could could you hear that man a better? Y'all seen me trying to nudge her up, but. Might have put her in a cage. Might have make a make a cage and put her in there, or she came back up. <laughs> oh, the mercy! Ain't nobody gonna ever accuse her of trying to steal the show. I I, I guarantee you that. That ain't gonna happen. Good gracious! If we're all in the twenty third Psalm, we're gonna look some more at that. Psalm 23, verse 5. Thou anointest my head with oil. Just a little bit of rain, but if it's okay with y'all, it's all right with me. We saw uh, last week how even at the high range altitudes, how just multitudes of flies will, will just, just invade a flock of sheep. You remember one in particular is the nose or the nasal fly that will will, will, will go up the sheet nose uh, mucous membranes and, and lay that tiny little egg then in a few days a little worm like larva will hatch and it'll wiggle its way up the sheep's sinuses and and, and live live there causing unbelievable irritation infection and inflammation that's better brother thank you as we can only imagine that would drive anything just about nuts. The sheep will beat their heads against rocks, trees, fence posts. They still got that little ring they're in, uh, seeking relief. But that sheep that has an attendant, caring shepherd, he can escape this torture because at the first sight of that swarm of those flies, the sheep begin to just go crazy. They know what they know what's coming down on them. And that shepherd, he, he, he's got him a mixture of linseed oil, sulfur, and tar, and he anoints the nose and head of every sheep in that flock. Problem solved. Remember how oil in Scripture is symbolic of the Holy Spirit. When we anoint oftentimes, here we're seeking Holy Spirit's blessed help and relief. We're told to anoint. So that's what David's talking about here. He's saying, Lord... By your very spirit, you help ease my stress. You, you, just, you, just, you just help take away the worries from my life. 
Oh, some of the petty and trivial stuff that people just lose it over. I was in Lowe's in Warner Robins uh, two or three years ago, and there are a bunch of contractors in there, and, uh, you know, those guys need to get their, their materials and hardware and get out there and get, a, get on a job because, I mean, that's their livelihood. Uh, I, I used to be right there with them. I, was, I don't know what I was buying, but mine wasn't of great importance, so I just kind of let those guys go ahead. Well, we start. We, we began to wonder. You, you're eight or ten back in the line. The line's not moving. After about ten minutes, you start to wonder a little bit. You know, come to find out, there was a gentleman up there. He had his sale paper with him from Lowe's, and they were charged trying to charge him twenty six cents more than he said it's come. Twenty six cents more than he said it should have come up to. And several of us there offered to just pay the twenty six. No, that's not the principle of it. They said they'd sell it for that, and that's what they're going to do. So he just holds, he just holds up, you, you know, a good portion of one Robbins, Georgia, over that 26 cent. When it wasn't even about the 26 cent, he's going to make that point. Lowe's was going was to know. And don't, don't you know that just endeared him to the employees there then? Oh, you know it did. You know, they couldn't wait to see him come back. But, man, the, you know, stuff like that, you know, you just want to. Man, what kind of life have you really got? If, if, that, if that can upset you that bad. See, that's why a close, intimate walk with Jesus and being led by Holy Spirit is imperative if we're going to be victorious and if we're going to make a difference for the good and for the better. Well, with those sheep, if the nasal flies and the bot flies, black flies, deer flies, gnats, and mosquitoes weren't enough, there's another little, there's a little parasite called a scab that creates a disease that will spread like wildfire through an entire flock of sheep. And here's how it spread. Sheep are fairly affectionate animals. They're social animals. That's why it's pretty easy to keep them in a flock together. And they'll rub their heads in an, in an affectionate, friendly way. Well, since that scab is most common around the head, it's easily spread among the sheep, that infection one to another. In the Old Testament, sacrifice times, those, they were commanded those lambs were to be without spot or blemish. And by the way, that's the kind of bride Jesus said he's coming back for, without spot and without blemish. That's why you gotta be saved if you're gonna go. Because we got them old ugly, we got them old ugly scabs all over us and even more so in us until he's cleansed us, until that blood's been applied. Miss Ann was talking about there this morning in Sunday school, you know, how, you know, that, that first Passover, where the word Passover came from when, you know, when, when, God, uh, when God sent Moses down there to tell Pharaoh to let his people go, and he wouldn't, and it finally come to the point, you know, listen, God can keep applying the, the pressure and get your attention. God can put enough pressure on you to get your attention. He got mine. He got mine. I, I, wasn't, I, I didn't go easy, Tom, but he got me. Yeah, sure, sure did. Mm. But that blood had to be, a, if that blood wasn't over the doorpost of a home, of a dwelling in Israel, firstborn son was going to be taken out, was going to be killed. And, but Jesus became the Lamb of God, the sacrificial Lamb of God. As Ann said this morning, that was, that was, that was temporary. Jesus is Jesus forever. And I love how Paul, Paul said in the scripture, he said, if God once honored the shed blood of animals, how much more will he honor the shed blood of his only begotten son? That's how we can know that we know that we know that we have been we have been cleansed. In the sermon I preached yesterday, you know, there in Ephesians 4:30, I, I believe is the verse that says, "We are sealed until the day of redemption." We're sealed with that with that blood, if you will, and nothing can take it away, and nothing can penetrate it. Well, as with the flies, the sheep's only hope is that his shepherd will come to his rescue and have the right antidote 
that will deter that scab causing parasite. Well, this scab problem often meant dipping, sometimes in submerging the sheep if they had access to the bed. And they put the right chemicals in there. And boy, no, you know that sheep is just crazy about that. When they got to hoist him up, a couple of a couple of men, and let him down in there, and got to put his head, got to got to put his head under there. That's the that's the main part. That thing's coming up out of that flailing. Man, don't you know that's them carrying on? I know Daddy sometimes when fleas would get on our coon hounds, hound to a point, Daddy say, "Well, I'm, I'm like, oh no, oh don't say it, Daddy." He said, "We're gonna have to dip them, son." I was like, oh, because I knew I was going to be right there in the middle of that dipping. In fact, once I got big enough, I was doing most of it. And <laughs> Tom knew my daddy. <laughs> and, uh, oh, man, you know them coon dogs is loving that. All right, son, you got to hold your hands over his eyes now and his nose so it don't strangle him, so it don't get in his eyes. Oh, yeah, Debbie, you can just imagine what, what some carrying on that was. But... But that was, that was the fix, to get them fleas off of them when they got that bad. But in Old Testament time in Palestine, that shepherd, it, the remedy for that was olive oil mixed with sulfur and spices. You see that sulfur showing up, don't you? I'm going to tell you right now, if you can hang out around, right around a heavy dose of sulfur, you tough. You better believe, y'all. And that scab, that scab parasite, he ain't going to hang around it either. But you know, in the spiritual sense, that scab is significant and symbolic of contamination. The scab human beings carry, the worst scab, is on the inside, and it's called sin. Sometimes it's even evil. See, that which contaminates and defiles us spiritually comes through our heads and our minds, just like that scab is on that sheep's head. See, that's why who we associate with matters. Because we're influenced by those that we spend the most time with. For example, if you're really trying to be a sincere, devout Christian and somebody that you, that you has been a friend a long time is negative about Christianity, that's going to be a drag and a hindrance to your faith right there. My lifetime best friend, Steve Jacobs. After I revealed to him my, my, my new life in Christ, it was eight years. It was eight years before he had, wanted to have anything else to do with me. Eight years. But there again, when he thought he was fishing to die with heart disease, God got his attention. And he called on the man of God at the local church up there, Brother Walker. And he come. And he, he, was he was ready to meet the master. And I had the honor, but the hard task three years ago of helping preach his funeral up in Charlotte, North Carolina. Can I tell you, can I tell you how hard that was, but what a blessing it was to know that the best friend of my lifetime was in heaven. Listen in, just listen in Psalm 26, verse 4 and 5, what David says about, about the, the company that, that he tried to keep. He said, I have not sat with vain persons, neither will I go in with dissemblers. That's another word for liars. He said, I have hated the congregation of evildoers and will not sit with the wicked. Mm, mm, mm. The the good will be affected negatively, sadly, by the bad, much more than the good will bring the bad up. I wish it wasn't like that, but it is. That's a fact. See, that, that's, why, that's why parents and grandparents and, 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 and close, close friends, that, that, that's why they, uh, young people think that they're, they're, trying to, they're trying to tell them what to do and they don't want them to have no fun and all that when they, they can see an older person off down. You, you, can, you can see a character trait or you can see an attribute in that person they're hanging around with. And you just know that, that that's, really, that's really not who they need to be associating with because we tend to start acting like and doing the things of those people 
that we spend a lot of time with. You'll be known by the kind of company you keep. Birds of a feather flock together, don't they? We're now in a time of very advanced knowledge and technology like no other time in world history. A time of mass communication. 24-hour non-stop up to the minute news on cable TV. And of course, computers and God only knows how many other devices that there, there are now. That seemingly more and more people are just addicted to. Oh, y'all remember Pokemon. Oh my goodness. America just went nuts over Pokemon. But with this mass communication is the danger of the mass mind. Just an endless barrage of stuff. People's mind just overload. Can't hardly filter and process. But so much. And young people in particular whose minds are so impressionable have never been so bombarded with such volumes of ideas and beliefs and temptations as they are now, y'all. See, we've got two medias to deal with. We've got the social media where almost nothing's off limit. And then we've got the mass media, which is mostly about news and information. I remember well, the only news you got from 6 to 6.30 every evening on Channel 13 when that black cat would show up back. Y'all remember that on Channel 13? You got the local news from 6 to 6.30 from 6.30 to 7, Walter Cronkite brought you, the, brought you the world news. Even in 1987 when I began working with the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, the newspaper was still considered a very a very important uh, organ in the news, in the news uh, world. I used to tell those guys, at the top of every page they begin printing, go to AJC.com. I told them, I said, fellas, the computer's gonna put, us, put those of us my age and younger are gonna, are gonna put us out of a job one day. And that's exactly what it did at the end of 2003. Sadly, we see the violence, hatred, prejudice. You know, I had always hoped to go to Wrigley Field, see a Chicago Cubs game. Not now. Who'd want to go to Chicago, Illinois now? Nobody in their right mind would want to, I don't think. But for the sheep and the shepherd, Oh, as the summer begins to turn into fall, those old insects finally go away, the cooler weather, it triggers mating time in the sheep. Deer hunters refer to this time as the rut, and so do sheep herders. Those rams will literally try to butt each other to death to be the dominant top sheep. This brings a third anointing by the shepherd. Modern sheep ranchers, they will smear something like axle grease all over those rams' head so when they hit then, they'll, they'll, they'll glance off each other during the battle so they don't severely injure and maim each other. Have you seen through this just, what a, just all the things that a good shepherd does to keep that flock healthy and to keep them working together and keep them, keep them at peace? But you know... Quite sadly, God's people do a lot of head knocking too, don't they? Some are determined to be top sheep even if it means bruising and hurting some of the others. No telling how many people have been hurt by someone in church and have sworn to never enter another church. It's disturb disturbing to see Christians hammer and and knock each other like that. And this is the exact opposite of how Jesus described his believers. He said, men will know you are truly mine when they see that you have love not for one another, but 
to one another. To one another. That implies action. That implies doing. Paul said, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not love, I'm useless. Though I have all faith, though, though I have the gift of prophecy, though I give all I have to the poor, give my own body to be burned as a sacrifice. He said, I could give all these most admirable things, and they mean nothing if I don't have the love of God living in me. Correcting me, guiding me, helping me to love and be patient, helpful to my fellow man. How ridiculous when any team fights within itself. That's what we're doing now in America, y'all. We're fighting against each other like we were one another's enemies. I'll never forget during the War of 1812, Andrew Jackson, also known as Old Hickory, and became, became president later. Two of his soldiers were fighting. They were just across the Mississippi River from the enemy. He heard, a, he heard a skirmish and a ruckus going on, and he came out of his tent, and two of his own men were just, and they were going at it, knocking each other down, rolling, rolling and trying to kill each other. He got in between them and, got, and, and collared both of them, got in between them there, and he said, Men, the enemy is over there across the river. That's where the enemy is. Y'all going at each other like y'all one another's enemy. You're on the same team. Can I tell you, church, our enemy is outside the confines of this church. But that's also where our ministry is, too. We gather here to worship, to get recharged, to encourage each other, to, to learn more, to grow in spiritual strength. Jesus said, peace I give unto you, but not as the world gives. David is saying here in verse 5, 3,000 years ago when he wrote this, 3,000 years ago when he wrote this, and he said, Lord, because you apply your perfect anointing over me, I feel blessed beyond measure. I'm satisfied. I'm secure. I'm not fearful even of death. Remember, he didn't stop in that valley of that shadow of death. He passed on through it. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I'll never, I'll never forget the, the, daddy, the daddy and his little baby girl. They were riding around on a beautiful spring day, so had the windows down in the car so the wind, wind could blow through and and, and all, all of a sudden, a big, a, a big old, big old Walsh got in the car with him. And he's just buzzing all around. The little, little girl just had, little girl just having a fit. And he gets a hold to her, and he said, "Baby, baby, calm down, calm down. He can't hurt you." She said, "Yeah, he will." He said, "No, he can't hurt you, baby, because I already, I, I already took your stinger." Jesus took the stinger for me and you. Jesus took the stinger. You don't have to fear death. Jesus overcame death. And he says, if you believe in me, even though you appear to be dead when your life ends here, you'll live forever <coughs> with me in a place that I've gone to personally prepare for you. He said, therefore I go, you may, you may come also, and if it were not so, I would have told. He reiterated that a second time in that verse there because he, want, he wanted us to get that, y'all. He wanted us to know that. I want you to know. There's so much more awaiting us. There's so much more on the other side. Oh, God. David's saying, Lord, because I'm yours and you are mine, my cup is overflowing. Remember a couple of Sundays ago, I said, you know, the, the optimist says the cup's half full. The pessimist says it's half empty. The realist says it is what it is. The atheist says, what cup? 
I don't believe in anything I can't see and touch. The child of God says, my cup overfloweth. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. If you'll walk close enough with Jesus, a cup won't do it. You have to start carrying a five-gallon bucket around with you. I'm here to tell you. With you. You say, oh, preacher, you don't know what, I, you don't know what I've been going through. I got a pretty good idea. I ain't lived 68 plus years and not, not had some of them times. It ain't gonna all be good. It ain't gonna all be good. Not here it ain't. Mm. Mm -mm. David saying, I'm so honored to be your child and your servant. See, I was I was I was commending Dennis and Charles and Johnny and Bobby and you know. I was commending them about their health. See, they, 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 they got servants' hearts. They got servants' hearts. Debbie's sister, she's got that servant's heart. She'd rather do, she'd rather do something. She'd rather fix you a sandwich. She'd rather fix you a cup of coffee. She'd rather, she'd rather clean up behind you. I've never seen anybody that just, that just left to. Debbie, what are you and Tom talking about? <laughs> I've never seen anybody that, that would that, that would just love to do something for somebody any more than that girl. Goodness gracious. But oh, when a person surrenders their life to Jesus, Holy Spirit moves inside. And mark it down. Jesus said you'll know a tree by the kind of fruit it produces. Yes, you will. And he said not to judge, but as Brother J.N. Stokes used to say, he didn't say nothing, he didn't say nothing to the fact that we couldn't be fruit inspectors. <laughs> oh, what a man of God. Mm, look forward to seeing him again. Mm, mm. David saying, because you're my shepherd, and you have proved over and over and over your love and your care for me, I am content in your care. You remember we talked about early in this series how how the old the old the old sheep herder told about uh, the neighboring ranch to him on the other 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 side from his sheep that that uh, that shepherd he all he wanted was what little money he could make off the wool and and off off of, off of those sheep he had and you could just see his sheep looking over there there, there at his with just a longing just a longing wishing that they could be under the care of that shepherd. Can I tell you, there's a world full out there that's under the wrong shepherd. They're following the wrong one. Oh, I see them young people. Some of them teenagers. Every night in Portland, Seattle, and New York. Oh, my God. If they put just, if they just put 5% of that kind of effort. Into, into, into something with, 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 with revolving around Jesus and Christianity. What a difference they could make. They're making a difference, but it's a bad difference. Oh, my goodness. I know y'all as troubled as I am. Oh, my goodness. I love my God. I love my family, and I love my country. I went and served when I was called. Turned my world upside down. I'd only been a daddy two weeks. My first child was born. I went. I went. And I'd go in quicker now. I'm telling you. That means something right there. It don't mean as much as that. But it's the next thing to it. Yeah, we've had our imperfections. Y'all have heard me preach about the injustice. In particular, how the black, how the black people were treated for so long. Slaves. God never intended for one man to own another man. You can't justify that. They tried to justify it back then with the holy word of God. You can't make a wrong thing right. And I'm telling you, can I tell you all this morning, we're paying the price for it now. Make no mistake about it. We're paying the price for it now. Mm -mm. You know him? God, mm. did y'all get that? Make no mistake about it. Mm. 
we ought to be the most contented, happiest people on earth. Remember what we focused on early on there? First Timothy, godliness with contentment. It's what? It's great what? Great gain. We all like gain, don't we? We like to look at that 401k statement and see that thing's grown, don't we? Yeah, we do. We like gain. Mm, mm, mm. In a wonderful way, my cup is how I appreciate and value and cherish this life he has so graciously given me. Grace. God's riches at Christ's expense. God's riches at Christ's expense. It's called grace because we don't deserve it. It's called grace because we can't earn it. So what's the condition of our cup? What's the condition of our cup? I got most of us down south here, we love us some we love us some some cold, sweet iced tea, don't we? Oh, that's the greatest. That's gotta be with just a little squeeze of lemon. That's gotta be the best drink in the world in the world. Well, some folks will let that, they'll make that tea and they'll set it in the sunlight instead of boiling it. Boy, after it, make, it makes it so clear and desirable looking, but then you leave it in the refrigerator a few days and it starts to get all cloudy and dark. Old drag starts settling at the bottom of it. You stir and shake it up, but it leaves a lot to be desired and at a point it'll even become sour. See, that sunlight was the anointing on that jar of tea, making it pure and refreshing to the partaker. Our lives will get cloudy and dark. Old dregs of pride and bitterness and jealousy, unforgiveness, discontent, unthankfulness. Will settle into our very soul if we're not careful. And if we don't stay humble and close to Jesus, we'll turn sour, just like that old aging tea will. This grand old beautiful 23rd Psalm here has taken us along with the shepherd and his sheep from early spring through the valleys, the summer up in the high mountain ranges, and now as fall brings cooler weather. He begins to bring the flock back down. It, and boy, isn't it always a lot more fun going down the valley, down the mountain, than it was going up. And those sheep are they just in, in that, that, that cooler weather, you know, you, you can watch even your, even your dog or your cat, you know, boy, they, they just they frisk up a little bit when that, when, that, when, that, when that fall weather starts coming along, don't they? You, they, they? They sense it. They probably sense it before we do, actually. And he begins to bring them back down to the, to the home where they got shelter for the long, quiet winter. Those autumn days with Indian summer weather, no more perfect living on earth than right then for that shepherd and those sheep. Temperature and humidity just right. The flies and insects are gone till the next summer. The sheep are fit and strong. That next generation has been conceived. No wonder David wrote, mm, my cup runneth over. Y'all, I'm telling you, mine, mine's running over. In spite of coronavirus, in spite of all the upheaval across America, Brother Jeff, my cup runneth over, don't yours? Amen. Praise God. It's a choice, y'all. It's a choice. If all you do is watch CBS, CNN, CNBC, it's going to be hard for that cup to run over. You're going to start feeling like that pessimist. If you ain't careful, you'll start talking like that atheist. <laughs> yeah, you will. But them sheep are fit and strong now. Mm. Those seasons for those sheep, listen to this now, were very symbolic 
to mine and your journey on this earth. Oh, in the spring, we're young. Most of us just almost perfect health. Loving life full of vim and vigor and ambition and initiative. Then we get that middle age. That's the summer. That's the summer of our lives. Our bodies and wants and desires still strong, but we're ever learning, dealing with a lot of stuff and situations and relationships. And then we come into that autumn. Much older now, hopefully much wiser. Finally maybe mellowed out. I love seeing how that Charles Oliver's mellowed out, Brother Dennis. And he changed. Lord have mercy. He's always, he's always a, a great Christian, but, but he's just, you know, he just he, real edgy, and you know, he just sometimes he didn't know how to take him. But boy, I'm gonna tell you that 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 love of the master has just permeated him now. He's just a sweet human being. Mm. And as Christians, hopefully, we've grown a lot and matured. You know, the Christian doesn't ever graduate. We don't get our degree until we leave this world and get up there. When he says, come on in, Tanya, I've been looking for you. You, with, you withstood the battles. You withstood the heat of the day down there. You were faithful. Come on in now. Get your reward. And then as you get to the winter, you look more and more forward to spending eternity with the shepherd. Can you say this morning, here and those of you that are listening across, across America, the Lord is my shepherd. You can't claim him if you've never surrendered to him. He's Lord of all, or he's not Lord at all. He's a jealous God. And he has the right to be, because he's God. So can I encourage you to stop beating your head against a rock? Stop headbutting and just enjoy what he's provided for you and rest in his care. Same verse you quoted this morning out of 1 Peter there. Jesus said, cast all your cares upon him because he cares for you. First time I read Matthew 11th chapter, I got to the end of it. It was in the middle of the night. One of those times, I'm pretty sure, when in my early walk with the Lord, I'd never really read the Bible, and I was just so consumed by it and just so amazed at it, I just couldn't get enough of it. And the Holy Spirit would wake me up in the middle of the night, and I'd get up in there quietly and and I read that for the first time. Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. And he didn't say, I'll give rest unto your body. A nice bed and six or seven hours sleep and a good, good supper will get you over that. He said, No, I'll give rest unto thy soul. He said, Take my burden upon you. Because my burden is light and my yoke is easy. Growing up around the farm life, let me tell you something. You yoke up. That's what joins like two mules or two horses together to hopefully keep them in sync, walking, plowing, whatever it is you're doing with them. You get one, you get one that's, that's frisky and got a high step, and then you get one that's laid back, yoked up together. <clears throat> <coughs> You and both of, the, both of them are in, in for a long day because they're unequally yoked. Jesus is saying, yoke up with me because I'm the one that can really help you. I want to encourage you this morning, wherever you are, bow your head right where you are. If you're not sure beyond a shadow of a doubt, 
If you can't say without hesitation, the Lord is my shepherd, I want to encourage you to pray this prayer this morning. Miss Ann, come and come and see what you can get out of that piano this morning. Now. If you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, that's what you need to do more than you need to do anything else on the face of this earth. That is the that is the one decision that you you just got to make. You just got to make. <laughs> Thank you. 